Psalms 137. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you for a lovely day. Thank you, Lord, for being a great and holy and wonderful God. Thank you for being our God. Lord, we don't deserve you, but we sure do appreciate you. Thank you for all your choice blessings, and thank you for the privilege of being able to attend the house of God this morning. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, throughout the day you would rend the heavens and come and take up your abode in the midst of your people. I pray that you would speak with that voice of thunder when thunder is needed, or speak with that still, small voice when that soft voice is needed. Father, I pray that you would bless the Sunday school hour, bless every class in attendance, and Lord, those that are there listening to the Word of God, may it grow their faith, may it draw them closer to Christ. Those who are teaching your Word, bring unto their remembrance those things they've been faithful to study, and God use them as vessels, as conduits of the Holy Spirit to communicate the Word of God to their constituents. Father, I pray for our jail services going on right now. You'd bless our folks over there at the jail. I pray that, Lord, inmates would hear the Word of God and would be saved. I pray that uh, jailers and workers would be saved as well. Protect our folks and bring them over back to us safely. And Lord, we certainly do pray for the worship hour to follow. God, you would meet with us in a powerful and a wonderful way. Bless now. Father, we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just got a little thought I want to look at from Psalms 137. Psalms 137 begins, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? In these verses we find that Israel is not what Israel was intended to be. Israel was God's chosen people. Israel was to be the standard for all the rest of the world to see how great a God Almighty God was and how good He was to His people. But Israel became complacent in their estate. Israel denied what God warned them of. They denied His word. And they began to serve the gods of the people that were all around them. They served gods that were no gods. And in that Baal worship and that ungodly worship, God sent prophets and He raised up men to go and proclaim to them what thus saith the Lord and remind them of their state. And they would not listen to the prophets. They stoned them. They killed them. They made fun of them. And God warned and He warned and He warned that if they didn't repent, judgment was coming. We find God is always true to His word even though they ignored the great preaching of men like Jeremiah and others before him, Israel was carried off into captivity, into Babylon. And here we find in these verses in Psalms 137 that Israel had lost her sovereignty. Look again at verse number 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. You see, they're no longer in their homeland. They're no longer in the promised land. Now they've been carried away to a strange land. They are no longer a country. They have been totally overrun and destroyed. And now they weep. If they'd sat down and wept before this, they'd still be in their state. Let me say this, friend. God has a way of humbling us. It'd be much better that we'd humble ourselves before God then wait for God to humble us. We find that she is no longer a country. She's lost her sovereignty. Friends, as we sit here today, I wonder if America's not lost her sovereignty. Mm. Can I say that America's more of a socialistic state than she is a democracy state today? America is 
not what she once was, and I wonder if America will ever be again. But I promise you she won't until Americans begin to weep for what we've lost. I preached a message a long time ago on you won't miss the water till the well runs dry. And that happens so many times we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. Hmm? Don't appreciate your health till your health's gone. Don't appreciate your bank account till your bank account's gone. Don't appreciate the blessings of life, maybe with family or friends, till they're gone. And we find that Israel has lost her sovereignty. We find not only that, but she's also lost her sanctuary. Look at verse 2. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. The very instruments they used to bring honor and glory to God in the sanctuary are now hanging in willow trees next to a river in Babylon. Because they have no sanctuary anymore. Can I say there's all kinds of testimonies around this globe of where there used to be a church, where God used to meet with His people, where folks used to worship and where folks used to assemble and where folks used to hear from heaven. But today, they're art galleries. They're museums. They're architecture shops. There is a big push in America now buying old church buildings and turning them into personal homes. You're seeing it all over the country. In my travels, I go all kinds of places, and I see, oh, that used to be a, a church. But look at it now. And my mind floods back. I wonder... When it started out, how many souls were saved? I wonder what work God did there. And then people turned from God. And they had Ichabod stamped over the building. And now there is no more sanctuary. Places that used to flourish with churches, now there is no true church. Our church is a testimony of folks that travel many miles just to come here because in their communities, there's not a church like this one. That's sad. I'm sitting here. I'm seeing folks from Indiana, folks from Ohio, folks from down a half hour, 45 minutes south of here. And we see it more and more as the day approaching. What day? The Lord's coming. Because in the last days, there would be a famine for the hearing of the word of God. Hmm? I remember a time when people lived down around Somerset and all that where they'd drive to Cincinnati up to Norwood and work five days and then go home on the weekends. I remember days like that. And back in those days, Brother Ron, they didn't have I-75. They'd come up 25. So it was a six, seven-hour drive. And they'd, keep, they'd rent an apartment with a couple other guys up in Norwood, work up there at the GM plant, and they'd go back home for the weekend. People would drive for work, but people don't drive for church. Hmm? I wonder what people are going to say when they stand at the Bema seat that lived right around our church. And we've knocked on their doors many times, but when they stand before God and they say, well, we didn't know, and he'll have to tell them, well, there was a church right in your midst. You went right by them all the time, but you was more interested in other things. But even worse than that, what are people going to do that once knew God and once were faithful to church and today they're by the wayside what excuse will they have you see Israel had lost her sovereignty and Israel had lost her sanctuary it ought to be a, a guard on our hearts and even a guard in our minds that we never put anything before the Lord and his church because we don't want to lose what God has blessed us with and then we find that Israel has lost her song. Look what it says in verse number 3. For they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Israel's lost their song. Can I say, child of God... Isaiah 61 3 tells us that God has given us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And no matter where you find yourself or in what 
lot has befallen you, you can have a song, and that song that glorifies God will lift your spirit even in the most tumultuous of times. Amen. Friend, when you lose your song, you're in bad shape. Hmm? Now, there are some people who have replaced their song. But there's nothing like a good old-fashioned song based upon the promises of the Word of God that will help you in the most adverse of times. We find that Israel's lost her sovereignty. She's no longer a nation. She's lost her sanctuary. You see, in Israel's day, they didn't have sanctuaries just everywhere. They all came to Jerusalem to worship the Passover feast. That was their sanctuary. They say that Solomon's temple, there's never been a building erected like it. But now Solomon's temple's been destroyed. They have no sanctuary. They have no, no homeland. And they have no song. Notice what it says in verse number 4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And I just want to give you a little thought on that this morning. I want to just kind of speak on this little thought, singing in a strange land. The Bible makes it clear that we are pilgrims and strangers. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. If you're saved today, if you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, if your name's been written down in the Lamb's book of life, your citizenship is in heaven. We are here, but we're not to get too close to here. We're just passing through. We're in a strange land. And I don't know about you, but the more I look around this world, it doesn't look like anything or resemble anything like what I remember it's supposed to look like. I mean, things I'm hearing are strange to my ears. Things I'm seeing are strange to my ears. Miss Annette and I was over at the mall the other night, and I saw sights. I thought, what in the world is that? Hmm? I, I, I swear I saw a peacock. Uh, it had clothes on and was carrying a purse, but it looked like a peacock to me. I thought, what in the world is that? And I think I even said it a little too loud, because I think this lady in front of us on the escalator might have heard me. But I, I thought, what in the world? Uh, and I saw this young man in a coat. I don't know what he was on, but he was tripping. Hmm? You say, what are you saying, preacher? I said, I'm looking around, and this doesn't resemble anything like what I've known. I, can I say, now I know I'm getting old, and I know uh, I've almost lived here in Florence for 35 years, but Florence doesn't represent Florence anymore. It, it, it just does not represent. <clears throat> I told Miss Nett, you know, how many of you are, are thrilled to get all those commercials and all them texts and all them phone calls from politicians. You thrilled with all that? Aren't you glad Tuesday's coming? Hmm? Huh? Tuesday's coming, hallelujah, and all that'll stop. But I told Ned, I said, I think I'm going to run for office. I said, I'm going to run on just a very simple platform. Make me governor, and I will do away with all roundabouts. <laughs> Make me governor. And all illegals will be gone. We'll send them to New York or Chicago or somewhere, but we're not keeping them. Uh, make me governor, and we will make certain that the Second Amendment is not only still law, it will be enforced. Uh, you know, law-abiding citizens, will hand them out to them. Here, come get you one. Here's the ammo to go with it. Uh. And make me governor, and we will enact the blue law again, and where Sunday's the Lord's Day. You know, I just run on that platform. You know, that's all I'd need to run on, because uh, most rednecks in Kentucky would go all for all that. Huh? But can I say this doesn't represent, I mean, I, I just look around and I'm thinking, what happened 
to our country? What has happened to our city? What is happening to our churches? What is happening, you know, everything going on? Well, I know what's happening. The Lord's fixing to come, and everything He said would happen, this know also in the last days, perilous times shall come. We're in a strange land. It doesn't look like home. It doesn't feel like home. It's actually getting kind of scary. Hmm? It is going to be wonderful going to the island this week just because I won't have to hear sirens 24 hours a day running down my, by my house. I mean, I mean, with the increase of all the people, I mean, it's either an ambulance or a fire truck or a police. I mean, there's sirens going off all the time because people are in trouble we live in a strange strange land now if we're not careful we'll allow that to impact us to where we'll become withdrawn I get it I don't want to hang out with a lot that's going on in this world but can I say the only reason we're still here is the Lord wants to show the world what he tried to do through Israel, that he's God, and that he can change a life, that he can change a soul, that he can change the outlook for somebody's future, that he can take the base of the base and change them and make them a child of heaven. And he can do that for anybody who's willing to accept him. And the only way that he really can do that, oh, he could write it in the sky, but they're not going to pay any more attention to that than they do anything else. People need to see how he's done it in other people's lives. And what greater way for him to exemplify that than us being in a strange land. We don't look like this world. We don't hopefully act like this world. We don't have the same outlook this world. They think about us about the same way we think about them. But what greater way to impact it when they look at us like we're strange? But they can't deny we have something they don't have. We have a song in a strange land. Now, I get it. There's a lot of folks we don't want to hang around. Matter of fact, I showed up early to vote the other day, and I seen Brother Jack miss Fedora, and they looked up and saw the preacher, and they said, oh, I don't want him to see me, and they went the other way. <laughs> no, they didn't see me. And I, they got right up on me, and I was going to beat my horn. I thought, well, Brother Jack's already 80 years old, and I don't want him to go to heaven from the voting booth, huh? <laughs> so, uh, but hey, they ought to see that even though we don't belong here, we've got a song even though they try to oppress us and make us be like them they can't break our spirit because we have a song hmm? listen it's easy to sing when we come in here but how about when we go out there do you know the whole world is impacted by music hmm? matter of fact I challenge you to go anywhere and just listen there's always background music always now if they're trying to impact us by music why can't we try and impact them through music just think about it now when restaurants get crowded they start playing more upbeat music to get you up and get you out of there hmm? When somebody wants you to hang around and shop a little longer, they play softer, pleasant music. It's a whole system. They know what they're doing. They know how to keep you at Walmart spending more money. Hmm? Uh, that's why some of them places you go into, you and I don't stick around very long because that music is scary. You ever see some of them shops in the mall and you think, who shops there? People that don't look like us. Hmm. But I mean, they got that head banging music. Hmm. If I go in there, I want to bang somebody's head too, huh? But that's a whole other story. So we're in a strange land. We should have a song, but are we singing in this strange land? 
Can I say that we can sing in a strange land because of the pardon that has been afforded us? If they can sing their music, why can't we sing our music? And if you've been saved by the good grace of God, you've got a song to sing. Hmm? Hmm. I find myself every now and then singing a song I haven't heard in a long time. Hmm? I was singing this morning, Brother Clint, that, that song you lead about uh, Jesus, our rock in a weary land. Hmm? You know, sometimes I just catch myself singing. Don't even know what I'm singing. I catch myself singing, and it makes me happy. So leave me alone, huh? You know what this world needs to see? Some happy people. Because when I'm out, you know, Miss Nett never pays attention to anybody. She wants to get in, get out, and go. I watch people. I say, did you see that? No, I'm not looking at anybody. I don't want to. Well, I looked at them. Look at them. They don't have any hope. Look at that person. I wonder what stress is in their life. Hmm? Yeah. You go out there and you see people in their 40s and they look like they're in their 80s. And yet we got folks in their 80s look like they're in their 60s. What's the difference? They don't have the same stress. Don't have the same habits. And we got a different song. We ought to be able to sing in a strange land because of the pardon that has been afforded us. If you're singing a song and you're happy about it, Somebody just might ask you why you're so happy. And then you can tell them. His name is Jesus. He changed my life. We can sing in a strange land not only because of the pardon afforded us, but the promise before us. <clears throat> the Lord gave a sign to Israel about a lot of things that was going to start happening. And He said... When you start seeing these things, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. That was a promise to Israel. Israel required a sign. Greeks required wisdom. We don't need a sign to know that he's coming. Everything he said needed to be fulfilled has been fulfilled. When we start seeing all these strange things happening, we should look up. Because we got a promise before us. It won't be long and we're out of here. What a blessing. We'll be home. Hmm? I don't know about you, but when I'm traveling, and a lot of times if I'm in a meeting and close out Wednesday night, if I'm within seven, eight hours, I'll just drive home. And there's just something about when I go underneath that railroad crossing of Walton, I think I'm just about there. Hmm? Just about there. I don't know about you, but we're about ready to go underneath the railroad crossing. We're just about there. And because of the promise set before us, we ought to be happy. We ought to have a song. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to have some problems. Yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. You're going to have some problems. Doesn't mean you're not going to have some pain. When you're getting older, you're going to have pain, especially when the weather starts changing. Uh, doesn't mean that you're not going to have bad days and you're not going to have troubles and there's not burdens in your heart. doesn't mean all that, but you still ought to have a song. Because we know this. When he comes, all that stuff's over with. No more pain, no more problems, no more misery, no more woes. Huh? He's going to wipe the tears from our eyes. And we'll be with the Lord forevermore. What's wrong with that? Hmm? So we can sing in a strange land because the pardon afforded us the promise before us but also the peace within us this world doesn't have any peace cracks me up I'm so tired of hearing stupid politicians call for a peace treaty over there with what's going on against Israel knowing that Hamas and Iran have come out and say they want to annihilate Israel off the face of the earth and they want to destroy America, even though Joe Biden is the one funding their war. Huh? I've seen where they're trying to put together another aid package for the Palestinians. That's not going to those people down there on the earth, on the ground, in the Gaza Strip. That's going to the terrorist. They're intercepting everything that comes over there and they're keeping it for themselves because that's what terrorists do. Hmm? 
That's why with Christ for the Caribbean, we're trying to work so when there's national disasters down there in the islands, we get it to the local pastors, local churches. They get it to the people. The last time in St. Vincent when they had that uh, uh, horrible uh, earthquake, uh, uh, volcano eruption, uh, a lot of aid was sent down there from the U.S. and it went to all the government officials and their families. The, the local people didn't get anything. Brother Sammy's church, the, people, uh, the ladies were fixing meals in the morning and in the evening. They were chartered a boat and they was taking over clothing and water and food for the... That's, and they got it to the pastors and they got it to the people. That's the only way the people survived. And can I say, uh, the terrorists always intercept the aid. And they call for peace, but they don't want peace. Let me give you a little history lesson. There's a couple of you in here been been around longer than me. But I go all the way back to JFK. You know what I've found in politicians when their poll numbers aren't good? They look to start a war. It is rare that we have ever voted a president out when we've been in the midst of a war. Anybody seen Joe Biden's numbers? They're non-existent because he's non-existent. We've got all this turmoil going on in the war in the world right now, and he's in Delaware on the beach. Huh? Because that's where they put all old people that's got money. And old folks home on the beach. Uh, but can I say, they call for peace. There's never going to be peace in the Middle East until the Prince of Peace comes and sits on the throne of David. Hmm? And all those that have fought against Israel, they're going to be gone. Hmm? That crowd over there doesn't want peace. They don't understand peace. The Bible calls them lion-like men, lion-like men of Moab. They're ferocious. They only know one thing, ferociousness. The only way you combat them is you hit them with a bigger punch than what they hit you with. Israel understands that. Why is our government telling Israel uh, to have a, a, a stay of peace and, and not attack your aggressors? I say, fry them all is what I say. I'm for Israel. Hmm? Uh, but we, we've got folks, they just don't understand. The Middle East is not Mayberry. Those people don't think like we think. They know how we think, and they know we're weak. So they prey on that. Hmm? We even got some in Congress. They'll take them out and hang them. I wasn't going to say this. Nowhere in my notes, but let me help you with something. <clears throat> Back when Teddy Roosevelt was president. Anybody remember Teddy Roosevelt? Now that's a man. Huh? You got to like a man that goes out and shoots tigers and, you know, then stuffs them, puts them in the White House. You got to like somebody like that. Huh? Teddy Roosevelt, <clears throat> we had a little skirmish with Muslims in America up in New York. And they got caught uh, doing some illegal activities. So uh, what Teddy Roosevelt did, you know, they were sentenced to death, so they hung them. And then Teddy Roosevelt had them buried in a hog carcass. You see, in their religion, if they have anything to do with a hog on them, they can't go to their so-called heaven and get all their hundreds of virgins. Teddy had them buried in a hog carcass. That was the end of any Muslim activity until just about 20 years ago in the U.S., there's been wars over there, and what uh, has stopped them is we've had planes fly over and shoot hog fat on them. There's a way to deal with them people. The only problem is it isn't very humane for the hog. But anyway, <clears throat> I kind of like eating a little hog myself, so let's put more hog in the ministry is the way I look at it. But the presence within us, we should be at peace. I'll be honest with you. All that's going on in this world, it's all been foretold. I'm at peace because I know the Prince of Peace. Yes. And because I'm at peace, I can have a song. Hmm? Sometimes I need a little amazing grace. Sometimes I need a little heaven's jubilee. Huh? But I'm glad I got a song. 
you can have a song you can sing a song in a strange land because of the presence with us, in us the Lord lives in us he is our helper he is our God he is our guide Jesus said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus told his disciples that just before he went to Calvary. He's trying to prepare them that he's going away, but the Comforter's coming, and when the Comforter comes, he's going to have my peace. And the presence of God in our life brings peace. And we ought to be able to have a song. A lot of things you can't have. One thing you can't have is peace. Hmm? Can I say, we ought to be able to sing in a strange land because of the praiseworthy one who loved us. Psalmist in Psalms 145 says this. He said, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. He is praiseworthy. And can I say that if you bless Him every day in your life, you'll have a song every day in your life. The problem is, is a lot of times we don't start searching for a song till we're up to our ears in alligator. It's a whole lot easier when you've been praising Him all along. It's kind of like when you need to talk to him and you haven't talked to him for about a week then it takes you a while to get right with him before you can talk to him well if you just talk to him every day guess what when you need to talk to him you can talk to him and you can sing a song in a strange land just by praising the Lord with your lips with your life with your steps everything about you people ought to know you belong to the Lord Listen, I don't mean to be unkind. Some people think that if all they do is to dress right, people know they're Christian. Well, listen, you ought to dress right. The Bible teaches us we ought to dress modestly and that our, we ought to not bring any shame to the Lord by how we dress or conduct ourselves or our communication or anything. We ought to strive to please the Lord but if the inside isn't cleaned up don't matter how much you clean the outside up hmm? clean up the inside of the cup first then if the inside's right I guarantee you the outside will be right but if you constantly live in an environment in your life that I belong to the Lord and he's worthy of my praise you'll have a song but if you wait till the bottom falls out and then you've got to go find you a song, you're going to be like this crowd right here. You're going to be sitting by a river somewhere with your harp on a willow. Do hmm? you ever think about that? That's a weird place to put your harp on a willow tree. Hmm? I wonder how many children of God got their harps hanging somewhere that don't belong. Hmm? You can sing in a strange land because of the praiseworthy one who loves us. Then I thought about this and I'll be done. We ought to have a song and we ought to be singing in a strange land because of the peers who are not of us. Everybody around here has neighbors, has friends, has loved ones, knows somebody that's not serving the Lord. You ought to keep a song on your lips because you might be the only one that will ever show them the Lord. I said this the other night, we could tell them, go to Walmart, buy a Bible and read it, you'll find Jesus. The only problem is, they're probably not going to go to Walmart and spend money on a Bible. If they did go to Walmart to buy a Bible, they may or may not get the right one. And if they start to read it, they're going to start in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, and by the time they get to all them begats, they're going to quit reading it. They're not going to know where to start reading it. Why don't you show them Jesus? Why don't you tell them about Jesus? And then why don't you direct them where they can find Jesus? But can I say that 
many times our life is the only Bible they're ever going to read. The Bible says we're written epistles known and read of all men. Your neighbors know when you go to church. They also know when you're fighting. Just thought I'd throw that in. Huh? Uh, it's amazing. We've got two old men in our neighborhood. You can say all you want to about women gossiping. Them two old men know everything going on in the neighborhood. They do. That's all they do is travel around and talk to people and find out what's going on. They're nosy, 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 rosy. I'm telling you. They're no I mean, they know everything. Hmm? They're so nosy. They know by the smell of what's in my garbage can what we had for dinner last night. I'm telling you, they're nosy. Well, I say that in jest, but you know what else? They also know when I'm away at a meeting. They'll, stay, they'll stop me and say, where, where was you at preaching this week, preacher? One of them had a heart attack, sent his boy over to him, hey, go have the preacher praying for you. Hmm? I'm just telling you, they do know. They know who they can put their confidence in. Now let me ask you this. Are they going to put their confidence in somebody that calls themselves a Christian that looks like them, acts like them, sounds like them, and is as miserable to them? Or are they going to put their confidence in somebody that claims to be a Christian and they look different, sound different, got a song even when the bottom falls out? Amen. That's who they're going to call on. Listen, sometimes it can be frustrating. You're trying to be a light. You're trying to be a witness. You want so desperately to see people get right with the Lord. And it seems like day in and day out, week in, week out, your efforts are in vain, but your labor is never in vain in the Lord, friend. They're watching. Amen. We've got to be constantly reminded that God's promises, He's not slack toward them. And He's on a different timetable than us. He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, what we don't see is the whole picture. One time I had somebody give me a, a needlepoint thing. Now, I don't know about these things, Brother Ed. I grew up with a ball glove. I didn't grow up with needlepoint ne needles, you know, doing all that stuff. I, I, I'm not going to say in mixed company what I think all that is, but it isn't masculine, okay? Now, if you do it, Brother Josh, hey, more power to you, buddy. Uh, but it was a beautiful picture and, and no telling how many hours it took it was, it was of the Lord's prayer and how, how long it took this person to do that and uh, one day I took it out of the frame and looked on the back side of it and it was an absolute mess it looked like spaghetti that had been dyed many colors just thrown in there well see that's how our world looks chaotic and we don't always see what God's doing behind the scenes. But God can move in the midst of chaos to do something beautiful. And see, what we don't see a lot of times is we just think it's us. But see, God's working in all different fathoms. Maybe using you to be a light, but He may be using somebody on the job to be a light to that person. Maybe using somebody to serve some coffee at the restaurant to be a light to that person. Maybe using somebody singing a song at a traffic light. You don't know what God's doing with other people's lives to back up what you're doing. We just got to be patient to wait on God because He does all things well. And we just need to keep singing in a strange land. Look, I don't want to lose our sanctuary. I'm glad we'll never lose our sovereignty. It's in Christ. And I'm glad that the church isn't going down. She's going up. Really, the only thing we can control with it all is our song. The Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare. There's some people who are intimidated and won't sing in a strange land. You ought to have a song. They're not bashful about singing their song. Why should you be bashful about singing your song? And Romans 10 tells us, when you put your faith and trust in the Lord, you won't be ashamed of Him. 
And he said, if we're ashamed of him before men, he'd be ashamed of us before his father. You ought to have a song. You'd sing a song in a straight line and say, Preacher, I work in an environment, they don't welcome that. Oh, well. They hired you, didn't you? Didn't they? Hmm? And can I help you with something? Nobody out there in the world welcomes what we got, or the church houses would be full. But the reason people come to Christ is they see something in somebody who hasn't hung their harp on a willow, but they got a song, even in a strange land. All right, we'll take a short break. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.